Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2016 Ford E450. This is a motorhome and it's got the 6.8 liter uh, V10 engine in it, automatic transmission. And what we're going to be working on today is the rear differential. We're going to be uh, doing a, a differential fluid service on it. It has about 30,000 miles on. Uh, the differentials on these uh, uh, motorhomes and, and also on pickups, they have a break-in period in that first uh, 15 to 20,000 miles where they give off a lot of fine metal. So you want to be getting that fluid changed out at that point because that fine metal will go through your bearings and do a lot of damage over time. And uh, get that fluid out, get it changed after that break-in period is over and then the, the metal wear is, is gone. Um, the fluid we'll be using today is the AMS oil. Uh, actually this is a 75140. I've got it in a pumper is what I've got it. But what I'm doing here is showing you the, the packaging that AMS oil has for their 75W90. Uh, like here's one for the marine gear lube. And it's a collapsible package because if you've got a, a bottle, those plastic bottles, a lot of these vehicles, they got a lot of obstacles to filling those differentials. And these here, you can bend and, and squeeze it like a, like a toothpaste tube and push that oil in. So I wanted to show you that because most of you aren't going to have a pumper. So this makes it a lot easier for filling up that, uh, that differential. The fluid we'll be using is 75W90 AMSO Severe Gear in that. And it holds uh, about 9.7 pints, which is just under five quarts. So you're going to want to have right at five quarts to be able to do this. This is the home page of fluidcapacity.com. Got two blue buttons here. One's the auto light truck fluid lookup guide. The other one's power sports fluid lookup guides. We're going to click on the auto and light truck. That'll bring us to this and we put in the year of the vehicle. Hit the build list button and it'll bring up all the vehicles A to Z. And we go to Ford Trucks, and we're working on an E450 van, and it's got a V10, 6.8. Click on that, and it brings up on the right side here, it brings up all the fluids that AMSO recommends in each cavity. Engine oil, uh, transmission fluid for, for both models of transmission. Um, we've got the 6R140 tranny in this one. Rear differential, they're both the M70HD and Severe Gear 7590 in those. Go down a little further, it gives you the power steering fluid and the brake fluid it recommends. Go down a little further, it gives you all the uh, filters that Amsoil has recommended for it. And then we get into the capacities and it brings you up the engine cooling system. Transmission, it shows the initial fill here at the top. Go down a little further, it gives you the total fill and they both are 18.7 quarts. The differentials, both models are 9.7 quarts. And if there's any notes that go with it, it's here. And then also uh, got some torques for some of the drain plugs here. And if you go to the top of the page, right here's a print button. So you can print that off for each of your vehicles because a lot of this information you can't find in your owner's manual. And this simplifies all that maintenance uh, information. And the first thing we're going to do is clean off the top of the housing. There's no drain plug on this. So we have to pull the cover, and when we pull that cover, if you don't clean on top where the cover meets the housing, if there's any dirt or gravel or anything up there, when you open that up, it usually falls right in on top of the gears. So first thing I do is go on top with a wire brush, and I take a, an air hose with a blow gun, and I get all that dirt off of there before I ever start working on it. So we're going to go through the procedure of that. I also have a, a silicone sealant that's uh, drivetrain fluid resistant. I will show you that here as well. Uh, and that's what we use to reseal that cover back to the differential housing. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with that. Okay, we're ready to take this back cover off and uh, service this rear diff. It's going to be a little snug back here because we've got a uh, big old fuel tank in the way. i got a couple brushes here. This one's a stainless steel, kind of a toothbrush size one. And this here is a bigger wire brush. I'm going to start with this bigger one. And I'm going to go up there around the top. If there's anything loose on top, I'm going to knock it loose. Any dirt may be setting up there. I'm going to knock it off all the way around as much as I can. If I need the little one, I can get in some of the smaller spots with the little one. After I get all that knocked loose, I'm going to spray it with blow gun. Get the, uh, Compressed air and blow it all out of there. Okay, that takes care of that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bust loose that uh, 
that fill plug. Oh, everything's nice and tight, yep. Yeah, and looks like that's a half inch ratchet. It's not a 3 8 drive. I'm gonna have to get a bigger ratchet for that. So we'll get that in the right size socket for here and we'll start taking that apart. Okay. We're gonna bust loose that fill plug. It's a half inch square drive ratchet in there. And right here you can see the metal on it. That's the uh, break-in metal we were talking about. And there's actually quite a quite a bit on there. It's real fine fuzz. Okay. And the problem with it, these magnets, once they get fuzzed over, they quit pulling. They don't pull as much as they do. But uh, we'll get that all cleaned off. And we're going to start pulling the uh, cover off. And that's a 9 16 socket. It's going to take, take those loose. And I might try that half inch ratchet to break them loose. And I'm going to use an air air ratchet to take them out. Hmm. They are a little snug. <laughs> now up on top there is a brake line and there's a little keeper up there that holds it. We're going to take that brake line and just put it up on top for now until we're all done. We'll take out that last bolt. Okay. I'm going to leave that last top bolt in just enough to let it hang. And we're going to break that cover loose because it's so coned on. And the way I do that, I've got a uh, an old gasket scraper here. It's one I use for this all the time. We want to get between the housing and that steel cover. It's going to be tight because of that silicone. It sets up in there pretty tough. There it is. Okay. And then pry on it and it'll pop loose and then the fluid will come out. And there it is. We'll let it sit there and dribble for a while and then we'll take that last bolt out and pull that cover off and take it out and clean it. And again this has about 30,000 miles on it. So it gives you some idea that fluid's starting to get starting to get a little dark. It's got a pretty good load on it with this motorhome. Okay, we got that last bolt out. Pull that cover off. And I probably have to pull that out the side here. There we go. Okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is clean up. And there's actually a couple little specks here that fell in even after I did all that cleaning. So we're going to get those specks off, and then what I do is I take a towel before I clean that gasket surface and I cover up the gear, just stuff it in there. That way if anything falls down, it's going to fall on that rag instead of on your gear set, instead of on the gear set. Because I'll probably end up using a die grinder with a uh, 3M pad on to clean that up all the way. We gotta get all that silicone off so it seals decent. That keeps everything pretty well covered up for the most part while we're cleaning up that whole gasket surface area. So that'll be the next step. Okay this is the cover. I wanted to get it out here and get some light on it so you can see what we're talking about. In that first uh, 15 to 20,000 miles you've got a lot of break-in going on in this differential. Everything's getting mated as far as the gears and everything. And if you look in here you can see all those sparklies down there. They're floating in the oil. You can see them all throughout here. And those sparklies is the metal I'm talking about. Now that magnet, you've seen how much uh, metal is on that magnet. 
and once that magnet gets loaded up it doesn't have the same pulling ability as when it's empty or has no 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 metal on it so what happens is this real fine stuff here keeps going through your bearings over and over and over again and it bruises them and if you can see those sparklies in there they're at least 40 microns in diameter and the oil film thickness on those bearings is one micron or less so this stuff here is going to do damage over time that's why we need to get this stuff out of the differential you can see it floating in the oil there too you know all those all those little floaties all those little sparklies is metal it's real fine metal okay so that's the break in we'll put the synthetic in the other thing is on the top half you can see where the oil is at where the oil level is at there's kind of a line right there okay on the top half here and again this is 30,000 miles this black stuff here that's all oxidation that's the oil beginning to break down to the heat and the oxygen and you know the longer you're gonna run that oil the more that black oxidation you're gonna get and the Anzol resists that thermal breakdown like no other so you're gonna have a whole lot longer service life on the oil you're gonna have a lot less wear and then the, the neodymium magnet the gold plug is gonna help you uh, to pull out more of that metal out of that differential so just wanted to show you that and you can see those sparklies in there and those sparklies are gonna cause you a lot of trouble down the road as far as your bearings go okay we gotta clean off all the silicone that they put on from the factory I'm going to use a motorized wire brush to do that. So that's what it look like when they're all done and we'll uh, finish cleaning it all up, get all that dirt off. A little bit of silicone in the holes, we'll clean that out too. And then I'll clean up the housing and we'll be ready to put it back together. Okay, right here is where I drove in that uh, gas yeah, scraper to, to break loose that silicone. So you're going to want to eyeball it. Just run your eye down the side here. If it's bowed, you want to get that bow out. This is a fairly thick one and it bowed just a slight amount. So I'm going to put it on the vise here and just straighten it out just a little bit. And that looks really good right there. Pretty much got it all out. And if you got any anything there that's sticking up, you can take either a file or something like that and smooth it off. But uh, we should be good with that right there. So we got the cover all cleaned up. We got the place where we pried it off, squared away, so this is good to go. Okay, here's the gold plug to replace this original plug. And I'll show you the difference here in strength. We can get it up part way with that one. Try it with the gold plug here. There we go. So the gold plug uses a neodymium magnet a lot stronger. It's got a lot more pull to it. Can't quite get that up with the other magnet. So these are gray magnet from the factory. So if you're interested in the gold plug, I, I'm a dealer for those and I can get those for you. Okay, we're ready to clean off the silicone. I'm using a good sharp gasket scraper. It's a fairly rough machine surface on here. What I mean by that, it's got a few kind of ripples in it from the factory. I think that's to help so the silicone has something to hold on to. We're gonna go all the way around and clean that up. And try not to get any of it inside. I got it covered up on top. So that helps a lot of that from falling in on top of the gears and the gear set. So we're going to get as much of that off as we can with the scraper. And then the final we'll use a, uh, a roll lock disc made by 3M and that should knock it off pretty good the rest of the way. So, I'll kind of show you on the bottom here where it's easy to get at and easy to film how that works. This here is my roll lock disc. So we're going to go around, we're going to clean that whole thing up. And when we're done, I'm going to take a can of brake clean solvent and I'm going to flush out that whole housing and uh, knock out any of that old oil and oxidation that's in there. 
So we're going to get that done and we'll be back with you. Okay, it's a tight fit under here. I got the camera up here, but you can kind of see what it looks like when we're all done. Um, everything's nice and smooth and clean. And like I say, the paper towels up on top keep a lot of that crap from getting into your gear set. Okay, so when we're all done here, we're going to pull this on down. Get that out of there. And any of these uh, little little pieces here, that silicone, I try to flip them out. The silicone itself ain't going to cause you a whole lot of problems, but uh, I try to get as much of that stuff out as I can. I just don't want it in the differential. And now I'm going to take a can of Brake Clean Spray Solvent. I'm going to spray that whole housing out. And then when I'm done, if you look down here in the bottom, I'm going to try and switch hands here. And see if I can get under there. It's a tight fit. There's a little, uh, let me turn this around. Here we go. There. Okay, now, right in here there's a little low spot. And that low spot's going to fill up with all the stuff that you flush down. So when you're all done, and there's going to be metal in there too, a lot of fine metal that's settled out. Okay, so make sure you get that little low spot all cleaned out. Because otherwise you're going to be leaving a lot of crap in there. So spray it down with the brake clean solvent, and when you're all done, use your finger, dip out as much as you can, and take a towel in there. And you soak up all that crap, all the loads that's left over that brake clean solvent, until it's all clean and dry. But you can see there's... There's metal in there too coming out. That's kind of settled out too. But uh, just don't forget to clean that out down in there. Okay, I got the brake clean here. We're gonna start at the top of the housing and work our way down to the bottom and uh, just spray everything down. All right, so when you're all done, most all that stuff will be down at the bottom. And you can take your paper towels and start soaking that out. Get that all out. Clean that pocket out good and then take some paper towels, soak it up. When you're all done, take some paper towels either with that brake clean solvent or ether and go around and clean this whole flange here so it's nice and clean and dry because we're going to be using silicone to put that back on again. So get that all nice and clean and uh, get it ready to go back together and uh, We'll be back with you. Okay, this gold plug here is a 9 16 hex, and the threads on it are a tapered pipe thread. So they seal on the taper. And you're going to want to use some type of pipe dope on it or thread sealant, and uh, just coat those threads so that it helps them to seal a little better. About like that. So that's ready to go. And this here is the gasket sealer that I use. It's a Loctite Ready Gasket. There's another one called Right Stuff. And what you got to look for is right here, powertrain fluid resistant. Because it has to be able to stand up to the synthetic lubricants that are used in the powertrain fluids. And this stuff will do that. And I've been using this for about 20 years. It works very, very well. So when you go to put it on, you're going to want to put uh, about a 16th to an eighth inch coating on it. It's ready to go on. And this stuff sets up fairly quickly, so you want to get, you don't want to be uh, getting uh, distracted. It usually takes about 10 minutes for it to skin over really nice. And I uh, give it probably, I usually give it about 15 minutes to a half an hour before I put fluid in. It gives it a good chance to set up and, uh, you know, skin over good. Okay, we got the, the housing here all clean and dry, ready to go back together. We got the silicone on the cover. And you got to be kind of careful when you go in so you don't scrape that silicone on anything. There we go. 
Now let's start putting the bolts in. Bolts are a 3 8 bolt. We're going to give it about 30 to 35 foot pounds of torque. I like to get all the bolts started before I start torquing them. So that they're all kind of lined up halfway decent, you don't have to fight them. Don't forget your little tab on top to hold that brake line. As you start tightening that up, you'll see it start to ooze out. back and torque it. Um, what you can do when you're done is just take your finger if you want to and run it through or you can just leave it like it is. It don't matter. I usually go around and just smooth it off just to make sure it's sealed good all the way and take off any excess. So again we're going to torque that to 30 to 35 foot pounds on all those bolts. The next thing uh, we're going to let it cure a little while and then we're going to fill it up. Okay, we're gonna fill this up and uh, should hold just shy of five quarts. So we'll get started with that. Uh, another thing too, if you take these to a dealership to change this fluid, um, most of the dealerships will not do all this work to do it right. What they're going to do is take that plug out and then they'll stick a tube down there and suck out as much of the old fluid as they can and they'll refill it. And uh, the problem with that is you're only getting part of the oil out and you've seen all the metal flakes that were in there. Uh, that doesn't get the metal flakes out. Okay, so if you're going to do this job right, you got to take that back cover off. Now a quick way to tell if they've done it or not is if the cover's never been off, that silicone that was originally on here still had the paint on from when they painted that differential at the factory. And if they say they've pulled the cover, and you still got that original silicone with the paint on it all the way around, you know they're not telling you the truth. And I had that happen with a guy with an F-350. Uh, he had about 300, actually it's closer to 400,000 miles on it. He said he'd had it done three times in the past. And when I went to take it off, two of the times, well, three, all three times he had it at the Ford dealer, and they charged him for changing the fluid, and it still had the original silicone on, and it still had all the paint on, so they had never had the cover off. But they, three times they said they, they changed the fluid. So just beware. And they make a note uh, about filling this just below that, uh, just below that uh, fill plug line. I'm not real concerned about that because there's a lot of room for expansion in that differential and the synthetic handles that heat so much better than most of the other oils out there. So we're going to let this sit here and uh, Settle out until it's level with the bottom of that plug, and uh, then we'll put that plug in. But uh, another thing to look at too is that fluid. It's a little bit foamy right there, but once the foam bubbles pop, you can see it's almost a clear fluid. And uh, if you look at the old fluid, you can see quite a bit of a difference there in the two. And like I say, we have about 30,000 miles on this, and uh, the new fluid's almost uh, almost like water. It's almost clear. So don't neglect your differential. It's a very expensive to uh, overhaul it, and uh, yeah, don't neglect it. Put that new gold plug in, and on this is tapered pipe threads. I'm just going to get her good and tight. It seals on the taper of those threads and on the sealant that we put on. <clears throat> All right, 
There we go. If you notice any seepage, you can always snug it down a little bit tighter, but that should suffice. All right. And the amount of fluid I used, let's see where we're at here. Looks like about eight pints. That's about four quarts. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amswell Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donswell.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.